Mac Voices is supported by ExpressVPN. Secure your surfing at expressvpn.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is the first of what I hope will become a series of interviews where we're going to highlight some of the apps that are available on the Set App platform. I'm really excited about doing this because, first of all, I think Set App is a phenomenal value um, for lots of reasons, and we can talk about that a little bit later. But right now, I want to welcome uh, Marcus Mueller Simhofer. He is the developer of MindNode, one of the apps that is available in Set App. Marcus, welcome. It's great to have you. Hello, Chuck. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. You're coming the whole way from Vienna to Mac Voices, and I really appreciate uh, you taking the time. That's right. So let's just dive right in. Um, MindNode is a mind mapping software. I know what that means, but some of our viewers and listeners may not be aware of what that looks like and the kind of things that you can do with it. So I'm going to let you just dive in and tell us all about it. Yeah, that's typically the first question I get when I say I do a mind mapping app. What's our mind map? So basically, mind maps are a visual way to uh, outline your idea. So if you think of a, a classical outlining app like Omni Outliner, for example, it's it's more of a, a text-focused approach. Yeah, but if you have a mind map, um, you can um, you can define all your ideas on a on a canvas and bring all all content into a more or less um, wish um how do I call it uh, um, a spatial spatial uh, you, you it's a way to to have your ideas in a spatial layout so i think it's a lot easier to view if you have a mind map in front of you but basically you have a central topic where you put in your idea so for example if you want to mind map that you're on, going to be on a podcast and want to talk about what on the talk and once you want to talk about on the podcast you put the podcast name into the center and then start putting all your ideas basically around this and yeah, basically, it's an outlining app, but in a more visual way. Well, and I think uh, something you had on the on the website also is is it's a, a good way to think of brainstorming as well. That you can, as you said, you can do it a lot more free form. It took That's me right, a lot yeah. to really understand the idea behind man, mind maps and the concept. Once you get it, though, it's all of a sudden it becomes in a lot of cases, a preferred way of trying to organize a project or, or mm-hmm. think about something you're trying to accomplish. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it's very, mind maps are typical when I start something new. It's, it's they always start in a mind map. It's, it's basically really how I think or um, typical when I start a new pro- uh, uh, project, my head is full of ideas, full of thoughts and full of, of, of connections, I'm not sure how they really fit together. And when I start with a mind map, it's 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 I really put in all my thoughts, all my ideas, and it starts to 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 connect together. It's like connecting the dots, and um, it's really it's a really different way to typically start a project. Project normally you perhaps start doing a list or something, but with a mind map, it's all. It's a little bit more chaotic, perhaps at first, but then it starts to show patterns and start things start getting together, and that's that's also the thing that brought me to mind mapping. And it's it's something I never learned actually. I only found it about when I was twenty seven or so, and then I realized, yeah, I really did it wrong all the time. Now I have found mind mapping, and it's it's the way I think. It's the way. I need something that's visual, something that's that's not just text, something where I can find see the connections. And yeah, it's a whole different approach to normal uh, problem solving, brainstorming. And and you use the word chaotic, which kind of at times defines some of my ideas because you want to just get them down. You want to get all the bits and pieces that are sort of in your head down into, in this case, the mind map. And instead of trying to do it with an outlining program or, or just a, even a text program to, to do an outline where you can, yeah, you can move things around by cutting and pasting and, and even dragging to a limited degree, but mind maps are, are built for that. 
so that if I have idea, you know, over here and it really belongs over here, I can just literally take that idea, grab it and drag it over and move it over there or connect it in some, in some way, which we'll look at in a little while. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it seems like something that once you figure it out and I know the way, the way that I had to figure it out is I had a project that I wanted to accomplish. And I thought, okay, this is, this would seem to be something that looks like it would be perfect for a mind map. And once I did, now it's like almost every project looks like something that at least at some point I want to use a mind map for. Today's Mac Voices is supported by ExpressVPN. Another day, another data breach. It seems like everything you do online, from making a simple online purchase to checking your email, puts your private information at risk. Products you looked at on one website follow you around the web like a bloodhound. In the world of social media, marketing companies, and even your own internet provider tracking you, you and your activities are the products that they sell to others. That's why you need to take back your privacy with ExpressVPN. With easy-to-use apps that run seamlessly in the background on your computer, iPhone, and iPad, ExpressVPN protects you with just one click and no compromises in speed or service. ExpressVPN secures and anonymizes your browsing by encrypting your data and hiding your public IP address. You might be sitting in New York, but to the outside world, you're surfing from Los Angeles, or Paris, or Hong Kong, or many other cities. Your choice. All that protection comes at less than $7 per month with the number one rated VPN service by TechRadar, and it also comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Even better, by visiting expressvpn.com slash macvoices right now, you can get three months free with a one-year package. You've been thinking about a VPN. Now's the time to do something about it. Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by visiting expressvpn.com slash macvoices. Thanks to ExpressVPN for their support of Mac Voices. You know, for me, it's really, my memory is just this, this magical thing that's happening in my brain, and it's so hard to put, a, a, to put words behind it. And I really want to, to give your audience a way to, to appreciate it and, uh, or to, 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 um, to start thinking about what they could mind map. And that's kind of hard because it's, you know, that's the, the the point, it's a visual that I always think of it in a visual way and then translating to words. It's basically the hard thing, I guess. <coughs> Let's give it a try. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. So, Yeah. And Marcus, I think maybe the best thing we can do, because your, your point is well taken, that we um, we show them a little bit about mm-hmm. it. Because both, both you and I are stumbling over trying to explain it. And it's a lot easier to understand once you see it. So yeah, that's give true. us a quick little little demo of this. Mm-hmm. So this is Marcus's screen, and he's going to show us um, what a mind map looks like and, and the things that we've both been trying to describe that are kind of difficult to describe. Marcus, it's all yours. Um, so basically, my note is all about focus. So if you come, come to my note, you're more or less in a state where you have a lot of ideas and you're not really sure how they connect to it. And, and you, you simply want to start getting a clear picture, but that's basically that what Mino is going to offer you. For example, um, I want to show you Mino. So what better to do than talk about Mino and create a mind map about Mino. So basically you have a center topic where you put in what you're talking about. In this case, it was put in Mino. Then here on the right side, you have something that we call node wallets, where you can start dragging out your ideas, but you can, no worries about that. You can also use a shortcut, keyboard shortcut to do this really quickly. So for example, my node is available in macOS and also on iOS, and we even have a watchOS version. You start to put in those ideas and then you kind of realize, okay, I want to group then under a different topic, like for some platforms. Let's see. And then, uh, as Chuck mentioned previously, you can simply drag and drop your ideas to have them connect in a different place. And so you can really uh, build uh, a map of your thoughts more or less in a very uh, organic way. So, and 
the quick, the quick question, of course, what can you do with Miner? So let's put in some use cases. For example, you can uh, do brainstorming like we do not right now. Ooh, oops, there is a typo. Oh, come on. Um, a lot of people use it to learn. Uh, for example, I really wish I had no my note during my studies because uh, my brain was all over the place and and really um, my note is is a really great way to to write summaries of your notes and um, also to learn based on the visual representation of the stuff you're learning about. Mine is also great for meeting for uh, writing meeting notes. For example, we use it internally a lot for this kind of use case. And mine is also great for example uh, content planning. For example, if you you can plan your next podcast or or a lot of people also use it to plan books or for example, if you're, uh, if you're writing a book, you really want to have a visual way uh, to view all your plot lines, and Mino is great for that. But if, if your book gets really complicated, um, sometimes an outline, an outline is not the worst thing. So we have an outline built right into Mino, which can use, especially if you have a bigger mind map, to browse around and also hide certain uh, topics to always stay focused. So and I also want to give you another really major use case of Mino, that's project planning. And we really have a great feature to manage tasks in Mino. For example, let me create two tasks. <clears throat> and you can co convert those nodes into tasks. And the really nice thing is you can check those tasks and we even have the option to export them um, to reminders on um, things and OmniFocus. I can only show you a mind map that's really like a tree, but ideas don't really are trees where you uh, dive into the information. That's why you can also create cross connections in mind mode. Um, for example, you could do this kind of connections and then assign, I'm not sure uh, why they should connect. And yeah, that's basically most of the things you can do in MindNode. And um, really, MindNode is really one of those apps that's really focused. We really try to do all the hard parts right and allow you to focus on your ideas. Um, and and when you, you, you collected all your thoughts, you really want to make them shine. And in MindNode, we have something called stirrers that's clip arts that look really great. They are designed by my designer. And for example, if you have platforms, you can put a computer in there. And um, the stickers also adapt to the current um, branch color here. So for example, if you open a specter, you can change the color of the branch and also the stickers will update. And as everybody has a kind of a different um, Style. We also have a few, few, a few template themes that will allow you to style uh, the mind map really the way you would like to have it. And of course, if you're ready, you can export your mind map into um, all different formats. Because mind mapping is, in most cases, the start of your idea. So you come to my note to to collect your ideas, to clear, get a clear picture, and then you want, for example, start uh, working with this information in another app. For example, you can use OPML to export it to Omni Outliner or Markdown to export it to Ulysses. And yeah, we have all kinds of export formats available for you. So yeah, that's basically the basic functionality of MyNode. And the nice thing is the same way it works on macOS, it also works on iOS. So we really try to have all features available on both platforms. 
and yeah. And as mentioned, we even have a watchless version, which is basically a way to 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 view your tasks uh, on right on your wrist. I can show, even show that in here because we also have a only show task list here. That's basically also what the watchless version does. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because when you said when you put it up there that you had a watchOS version, it's like, yeah. oh, that's really interesting. Um, wouldn't have thought of exactly that. So a couple things here to be clear. The, you're showing us a relatively small window. That window can be increased in size to oh, yeah. as, as we do more things. Can we put more than one? Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what the proper term is, Marcus. Um, can I do more than one? one idea i mean my node let's say is my central idea can i have a second yeah. central idea in this mind map um yeah that you can simply add as many ideas as you have so basically it's an infinite canvas where you can start collecting all your ideas so basically uh, another approach to brainstorm is to uh, connect create different ideas around the canvas and then start to connect them and and build your your big picture view. Oops. Yeah, and again, as I said before, you can also uh, connect them like um, concept mapping app. Yeah, I think that's that to me is is one of the real powerful things here. Is if I'm if I'm sitting down at my desk or with my iPad or whatever. That the the important thing, as the GTD folks would say, is get it out of your head and get it down into the mind map, and yeah. then you can start to, as you just showed, drag it around, connect, associate, put them in some kind of order, then rearrange the order, um, very in a very visual and and very almost especially with the iPad, very tactile way, as opposed to trying to maneuver around with the keyboard and, and even with the mouse to a lesser degree. Yeah, that's that's what I tried to uh, communicate early on, and which is really hard to describe describe in words. I guess it's because it's such a visual and fluent way to um, work with your ideas and thoughts, other than other apps, for example. Yeah, and and I love the fact that you know your information is not trapped in my node. That you can do the export to a lot of the favorite tools that folks have. Uh, you know that. That, okay, so we've got it a lot more organized, or we want to share it with someone who doesn't really understand the mind mapping concept or doesn't have the software. You can get all that information out into something they recognize. Correct. Yeah, we really we, we really try to not be a silo where your all the information goes in and then there is no way to get out out of it. We really think of MindNode um, as a way to to kickstart a pro project. Uh, give your ideas uh, some context and then start to work with them uh, or move them into other apps. And that's really how we think about it. The, really, the important part is that MindNote allows you to capture your ideas, capture and then organize their ideas and then move them to other apps and then really start to work on them, start to give your ideas some life. As a developer, I'm really curious. You have an iOS version, you have the Mac version. Which one do you think is the most effective uh, as, as far as mm -hmm. using it the way that you'd use mind maps? I have to be honest, I really like the iOS version right now. It's, it's, it, was, it, it was initially really a challenge to port MindNote to iOS, and it was, in the beginning, not a very good version. It was more or less well, you do everything on your Mac and then, okay, then you can also view it on your iOS device when you're on the road. But it's really, the iOS version is really starting to shine, especially also because we have a lot more freedom in use uh, defining our own UI and playing with UI stuff on iOS, which is not really that much that possible on Mac when, when all the... Uh, guidelines are re really fixed and um, you really can't have um, a lot of flexibility in trying to design a unique look and unique um, UI. One other thing that I wanted to point out, because I watched you do it, and you just 
the speed with which I mean I understand that you're very familiar with my with uh, with my note, but you mentioned taking meeting notes, and I'm sure someone is going to say, "Gee, I don't know if I could if I could get all this stuff down fast enough to do it in in a meeting." And quite to the contrary, it's it's ideal because you don't have to do the organization while you're there. You could just throw it into the mind map as as separate ideas and then link them up later. Or if if something clearly belongs with something else, you do that very automatically and very quickly. So it it does definitely allow for that rapid deployment of of information into the mind map. That's right. When when I take meeting notes, um, usually in a, when I take them in a, in a text document, I always have the problem that I have to jump around in the text document because perhaps I want to have some information up there and then I have to go back and in the mind map, you're really free because you see all the information hierarchical hierarchical way so it's a lot easier to append some information up there and something down there and and that's really um like, like i mentioned it's really a more visual way to to see your notes and i understand that not everybody likes this kind or works this way because everybody's a little bit different but if you're you're really visual person like me it's it's a real lifesaver at some times yeah I'm really passionate about this app because it helped me me personally um, uh, me personally to get my all my ideas sorted because before I was um, a mess more or less because I was a very chaotic person um, and mine was really for me um, the app that helped me personally to get my thoughts sorted and get get something done in my life and that's the awesome thing about my note. And that's what we're all. That's one one thing we're all looking for. There's no question about it. Is is a way to get to take some of the chaos that's in our lives and get a little more organized. One thing I should have asked when you, you had yeah. it up on the screen um, is there is there any limitation to the size of a mind map that in, in my node? And what I mean by that, not screen size, but because I know you were zooming in and out. Mm -hmm. But I mean, can. If, if you if you wanted to use MindNode to work on a really tremendous project, multi-day project, multi multi state, multi location, multi multinational, um, is there any practical limitation to the size of a mind map? Um, no, um, well, there is definitely no limitation when it comes to the canvas size because my previous app was called Infinite Canvas, so the canvas is also basically infinite in my node, and you can you can scroll for a long time before you hit any boundaries. And regarding information, there is no hard limit in my node. The really only limit is memory size and performance wise. So we in, uh, last year, especially, we focused a lot of time getting the performance issue sorted if you work with a lot of topics on the canvas. But it's really, we really greatly improved that recently. And well, it should take care of most of your, your ideas, even if they are larger. Yeah. Um, do you support the Apple Pencil um, on the iPad Pros at this point? Um, well, um, we have some optimization in place. Or, for example, normally if you touch down on a note, you have to wait for a few seconds until you can drag them around. With the Apple Pencil, you can drag directly. And uh, we have an update coming up uh, later, in probably end of April, where we also support the Pencil for multiple selection iPad. And and we are trying a few things. We it's it's could basically uh, also be interesting to to draw around the mind map, but it's really hard to then map the drawing to the real nodes, and especially if you also want to be, continue to be able to move the nodes around. So we are still figuring out how to best integrate it. And at the moment, we think the pencil is a great way to to be a little bit more productive than with the finger. So. What what versions of MindNote are out there, and and what kind of pricing do we have for them? Uh, so we have a Mac version, uh, which is currently at forty dollars, and we have an iOS version, which is at fifteen dollars. And the iOS version also comes with the Web Watchers version. And if you're on the previous version before MindNote five, we also have discounted upgrades available. 
very similar to what Omni Group did with their uh, recent updates. And of course, as I mentioned, MindNote is part of the set app. Um, That's so right. Which is is just a phenomenal thing. I, I love the way they've approached that, and you as a developer are supporting it. Um, and I, I, I presume that you're still in it because it's uh, working out well for you. That's right. Yeah, we, we only recently joined Setup, to be honest, so about three months ago, and it's re- working out really great for us. And I really think that um, the ability to pay for a subscription bundle is probably the way forward also for apps. As, as usually, users normally do really don't want to pay for every app, a subscription for every app. So uh, subscription bundles like this are really interesting for us. As a, yeah, I'd, and I like the fact that that Setapp has not just gone out and signed up everybody they can find. You know, they they really have vetted the process a bit. They get some of the, the they get some of the highest quality apps out there, and you as the developer get paid for it. So I can feel good about supporting you as a developer, and still getting access to a lot of apps that I might not otherwise you know, bother to look at or decide to even integrate into my productivity. So I think it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, especially it's so easy to install an app, giving it, give it a try and really uh, have also different apps of different, uh, of the same category and give them a try to see which one works best for you. So I think a lot of users uh, are really happy with setups and yeah, also we, we as developers. Um, the website where folks can go to learn more about all this. Obviously, the, the, it's in Setapp, of course, and in the in the Mac and, and iOS stores. But uh, where's what is your website? So the website is mindnode.com. It's m i n d n o d e dot com, and you find all the information on there. Great, Marcus. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks so much for the time. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Chuck. And I, I hope you don't mind me sharing with everyone. Marcus, Marcus is not a native English speaker. He's he's a his he native English or native tongue is German. And so he's trying to translate in his head and talk. And all I can tell you is that he did a much better job doing that than if I were trying to do this interview in German. So Marcus, good job. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I can't stress enough to go and check out my node. Uh, I think it's, it has the potential to change the way you do a whole lot of things that you organize things. And to take what Marcus said, take some, take some of the chaos in your life and maybe organize it just a little bit. And of course, check out the Setapp service at setapp.com. I don't think you will be disappointed with that one either. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.